Today we're gonna do things a little differently. The time has come for me to reveal my net worth to you at the ripe age of 29 years old like I do every single month. And we're gonna start with this. At this time I have $170,170 in assets. I know that's a weird number, so I'll put it on the screen so you can see it. But we're gonna break down exactly how I got to this number in assets, and then we're gonna go over my debt, and then you'll see my entire net worth at the age of 29. We're gonna start from the most underwhelming part of my portfolio, which is cash. So right now, my checking account, and I'm just gonna take a look down here for my notes, I have $2,623 in my checking account, and these numbers are rounded, so I didn't bother with decimal points because I really don't think you guys care about that so much as you care about the general amount that I have. And uh, in my savings account, I have $1,147. And in my emergency fund, at this time, I have $6,255. That's with my Marcus by Goldman Sachs account, which gives me just over 4% as an annual percentage yield, which means I'm making money every month, whether I put money in that account or not, which is pretty cool. But again, this is just the most underwhelming part of my portfolio right now. So we'll talk more in depth later on about how cool it is just to make passive income just from putting money in certain places. So now we're going to jump into some more of the interesting things that I'm really, really proud of and really excited about. And we're going to jump into my 401ks right now. And my first one right now, I have two of them. The first one I'm going to go over is my Empower account that I had with my previous job. Right now it is at $10,947, which is a nice amount it did drop just a little bit from last month but that's no big deal because as you will find in this video my net worth did in fact go up despite whatever losses I might have taken throughout the month so now we're gonna jump into the second 401k which I really think I'm gonna hit my goal by the end of the year I don't know it could it could be close but uh, right now it's at ninety thousand four hundred and eighty seven dollars and that's the one that i've only had for just over five years and so i'm very very excited about that i think i have gotten into the right company i think i've invested in the right 401k at the right time and I, i'm so blessed to have a company that's matching me my other company matched me too but the the caliber of 401ks were totally different but another thing I will point out, I think a big reason as to why my 401k is so high now is because I never stopped putting money into it, even when things were going south in 2020. I did not care. I was like, I'm still investing. I ain't retiring for a long time. I'm going to go ahead and keep putting money in there. I wasn't freaking out and withdrawing my money from my 401k. I was making sure I was making positive life decisions for my future self and my future family rant over i just thought you should know that but i'll tell you what though both of my 401ks together are already over a hundred thousand dollars which that's really cool i have a feeling once these accounts start individually hitting one hundred thousand dollars i have a big feeling that my net worth is going to go parabolic you know what i'm saying that little half u shape going upwards that's about useful but aside from that, another really exciting thing is my Roth IRA. At this time, the account is worth $20,549. And that's a heavy amount to have in these four asset classes that I'm about to talk about right now, which are stocks. But Apple, Microsoft, VOO, and BTI, not my strategy at all. I give all the credit on this to Ian Dunlap because all I did was took his advice and put a portion of my net worth into that but I think it is incredibly genius because all four of them give dividends all four of them are high growth high return low risk I think it was an excellent strategy but I think having 20 something grand into these stocks I think in like if I didn't touch this account at all which I'm going to definitely continue to contribute to um, but if even if I just didn't this would go to the moon and beyond as people say within just a few years but that's why I'm going to continue putting money in there despite what the prices are. I'm really not worried about all that. I think long-term investing is one of the most stress-free things you can possibly do with your money to watch it grow in the long term because time is going to go by anyway. I'm not going to get lost in this message. I'm going to go on to the next step. I mean, the next account, which is my Weeble account, my individual brokerage account in which I invest in mainly stocks, but also one ETF and that one ETF is VTI, but the stocks I'm invested in is NVIDIA, Google, 
Microsoft, Apple. And as you see, I do not invest in a bunch of different stocks. I invest in a specific amount of stocks to get higher, more concentrated growth. And I do that very intentionally and it took me forever to learn it. Um, at first I was one of those guys who owned a ton of stocks and my account was up like 6%. Right now, it's up in the hundreds. Like yesterday when I was looking at it, it was up 144%. Keep in mind, I've only owned this account since the year of 2020. And back then, I didn't have the money to be investing a lot into this account. So really, I mainly spent 2021 and 2022 building up this account to what it is today. This year, I barely contributed to this account. I've only added like $200 to this account one time. And I believe that was the month of September. And the overall message I want to give you with this so far is that it doesn't take a lot. It just takes a little bit over a consistent amount of time. And it also, of course, takes good decision making when it comes to what you invest in, which I happen to be very passionate about and which, you know, I've spent quite a bit of time on this channel specifically showing you how to do. But I'm also still working on this course, which is proven to take much longer than I thought it would take, besides the point again. But in the last year, and I'm going to show you a screenshot just for proof, I've earned, now granted, I have not cashed this out, but on paper, I've earned $15,776.22. I will include the cents in this one because, you know, I feel like it bears me telling you how much exactly I've earned this year just from holding my investments and not touching them. That is where the money is. And so for that one year period in which I've earned that amount, I'm up 81.98% in that year. I, I mean, my account has outperformed SPX, DGI, basically the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average Indexes. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it and do not click off this video because there's important information in which I can share with you on how to make money with the least amount of effort possible and spoiler alert it's through investing but isn't that ridiculously cool i've had this youtube channel for a while and the lifespan of this youtube channel that I've, I've had this since 2019 march of 2019 and it's gotten monetized it's had its good months it's had its bad months it's gotten a thousand dollars it's gotten you know one hundred dollars like it's going to depend on what i make but throughout the entirety of the lifespan of this channel so far so far I have still not made $15,000 throughout the entirety of me having this channel. Not even $12,000. So it's really cool to know that you can just have your money planted somewhere smart, somewhere, we'll say, safe-ish, because the stock market does fluctuate, but it's safe if you just hold it and don't touch it and you are in the proper investments and you've done the right research. But it's so cool to me that I just get to watch my money grow and I'm making passive income because literally my money's parked. I'm not watching anything. I'm good. The companies are gonna keep thriving for years to come. And that is the coolest thing to me. Another thing I noticed, I made $119 this year in dividends. And while a lot of people are like, well, that's not that much. Yeah, it's not. But no one's handing that to you for no reason. And two, I remember when my dividends were just a few cents, like 25 cents, 75 cents, and like the total would be like a dollar and 25 cents or something like that. So my account has come a long way, and part of my strategy going into next year is buying more Microsoft and more VTI because both of those have really good dividend yields in comparison with my other stocks that I own right now on this specific account. And the more shares you have, the better your dividend's gonna be. So I just, I'm excited about being in high growth opportunities like these stocks and also getting those dividends. And I did the math and if I focus a little heavier on dividends and buying those stocks more often, like I've pretty much neglected this account all year this year, but if I focus on these two specifically, I think I'll see some very big returns. So that's what part of my goal is for next year. More to come on that later. But yeah, anyway, this account is a complete beast. I love it. It is my favorite account. 
is so great that I think I completely forgot to tell you how much I have in it. $35,012 in my crypto account. I have $533. Y'all know I really don't really care that much about this account, but um, I actually have the device with me today. It is on this cold wallet called a Nano Ledger. It's this little old school looking chip thing with a little screen on it. Um, it's about expensive, but it keeps your money secure. So like if I, if Bitcoin or Ethereum hit it big and this 533 turned into like 500,000, I wouldn't be worried about my account being hacked because again, it's on this nice secure device that I bought back in 2022. You probably didn't care to know that, but for those of you who are extra into investing, you, you might appreciate that anyway. Life insurance, the thing I get absolutely just ugh, crucified over. I don't care though. I'm going to keep doing what I do because my net worth is going up every month and I think I've been making the right decision so far. And if I ever decide to cancel this in exchange for something else, I will definitely let you know. But please, y'all got to chill out in the comments about this life insurance. Anyway, $2,618. This is, of course, whole life. I do have a term life account as well. And both of them are very inexpensive for me because I've had these from a young age. And of course, the younger you get life insurance, the cheaper your payment is going to be. And that, my friends, totals out to $170,170. And that's a really cool number, if I do say so myself. And now we're in the liabilities category and i'll just go ahead and say it i have twenty-three thousand four hundred and forty-four dollars in liabilities which means you can basically subtract that from my assets and that'll give you my, my net worth but if you don't feel like doing the math i'm going to tell you what it is anyway so check this out i have twenty-three thousand and sixty-two dollars in student loans and my credit card has 381 dollars on it currently that I will be paying off in the next couple of days. As y'all know, I wait until the payment's due to pay it off completely, and that's just what I've been doing for a long time, and that is what's best for your credit score, if you didn't know. So my net worth at the age of 29 is $146,727. So it's gone up almost 4,000 from last month. Now I didn't make an extra $4,000 this month. This is all a result of me focusing heavily on building wealth and becoming financially independent and eventually financially free. This is really cool stuff to me and so I think you'll appreciate what I'm about to say too, but this is the treat that I have for those of you who actually decided to stay this long throughout the video. You deserve the game and the most valuable information, so I'm going to give that to you right now. Check this out. At the beginning of the year, I set a goal to save $130,000. And I don't mean a no savings account. I mean for my net worth to be $130,000. A few months in, I was like, man, I'm gonna just blow right past this. And I did. And now I'm almost at $150,000. And the year is not over yet. We still have two months left, November and December. And with each dollar I get, and as y'all might have seen in my finance update videos where I talk about my income, my expenses, and my savings, and my investments, and all that good stuff where I break all that stuff down. You've probably seen that I haven't even been super frugal or super tight with my money. I've been, like, some months, I straight up splurged. That's just me trying to find balance in my somewhat chaotic life. And by chaotic, I mean that in a very positive way. I'm just a busy guy. Full-time job in a leadership role. Hobbies girlfriend, working out, running, jumping, swimming, fighting, like all that stuff you can think of. And I don't mean fighting in like a bad way. I mean it in a martial arts way. I'm into Muay Thai and I've been doing it for almost two years now. And right now I'm in the best shape of my life. I say all that to say, it's cool that I'm having all that stuff going on. And in the background, money's just growing and growing and growing. I'm so happy that I took the time to learn and make the mistakes and figure things out in my early 20s so that now when I'm approaching 30 next year, I'll be approaching 30 in August, I will still have my money growing and working for me in the background behind the scenes. Life is stressful enough. Things happen. People get sick. People pass away in the family. Bad things happen to good people. 
And you have to absorb all of that, still go to work, still perform, still pay your bills, still do all these things, still try to take care of yourself, eat right, work out. If you have time to do so, get the correct amount of sleep and function as like an adult human being. And then on top of that, if you have kids or other responsibilities or a spouse, or you might have like marital problems or problems in your relationship with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, like all of these things can happen. It's just an awesome thing when no matter what happens in life, you just know, well, my money's growing in the background everything is going to be all right. That's like a safety net. I'm not saying it solves all problems, but I don't think anybody's going to complain about having extra money in the bank that's literally working for them and literally handing them $20,000, $40,000 over the course of just a few years because that's money you would not be making at your job. I tell everybody this. I think at your career, you should go for whatever your goal is within your career, whether it's a promotion, whether it's staying where you're at and just doing the best you can, whether it's just making more money, whether it's working more overtime. That's great. But don't wait on something else or someone else to give you the opportunity. Sometimes you have to go out there and get it yourself. And a fine way to go out there and get it yourself is learning about how to make your money work for you. You don't have to make a YouTube channel. You don't have to write a book like I did. You don't have to create products like I do or like other entrepreneurs do. You don't have to do what you see other people do on social media. You don't have to start a business. You can put your money into a vehicle such as the stock market and let your money grow. And I'm telling you what, it is one of the most lucrative things you can put your money into. And of course, you have to have money to do this. That's why I have so many videos on how to manage money, what to do with your money once you are financially stable, how to become financially independent, how to save money properly, which I just came out with last week. So my net worth did not get to where it is overnight, and this is definitely not a brag session. I'm just letting you know. I'm proud of where I am right now. But it's not just because of me. It's because I learned from other people who have already gotten to where I wanted to be financially. And, and I made my mistakes, but I also figured out what worked and what didn't. And I continue to do what works. And as a result, my account has grown well over the six figures and well over my goal. Just last December, I was at 90 something thousand. I wasn't even at 100,000. Now I'm almost at $150,000 without me going gung ho on my savings or having 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 dollars in my savings. Most of my net worth is coming from my investments and my investments are just boom 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 printing money and it is an exhilarating feeling and you just sleep better at night when you know these things are in place for you. You know if you can just withdraw a certain amount of money, if you ever needed to, you can take out a few thousand and handle some business. If you absolutely needed to, you know you're good in that way. So at 29, I'm happy with what I have built so far. And every time, I'm, I'm always going to aim for the next one. All right, we're at 100. Let's go to 150. We're at 150. Let's go 200. We're at 200. Let's go to 300,000. We're going to keep building this thing up. And I'm going to get more aggressive about it because I've created something very special and it's called the smart money calculator. Initially, I, I kind of like was figuring out the best way to get money saved and the best way to look at money at a year at a glance type of view. And it was more so for me to help manage my money. But then I was like, before I even started using it, I was like, nah, this the, the public needs this. So I created it and I'm going to use that to my advantage not wait until next year i'm not waiting until january 2025 it is the time is now so i'm gonna start using that calculator right now and benefiting from the results because i think it is an ingenious calculator i've never heard of anybody thinking of saving that way but i will be using that and you'll be seeing it in future videos in, in my wealth journey series about how i'm using it and how i'm going to be more aggressive about certain aspects of my net worth, such as saving, such as investing. Because right now, even though I'm happy, I'm not content with my saving and investing. Right now, I'm still hungry and I gotta make sure certain things happen. But if you're curious about my smart money calculator, 
check out this video. It's going to describe it in depth and it's going to give you exactly the tools you need if you feel like you don't have enough money to invest right now. If you want to get in on this, click that video. It's going to give you a big in-depth description of, of what the smart money calculator is and how you can use it to benefit your life. Check out, check out the video on the screen.